can you feel the fear? Are you afraid? I moved into my friend Rob's house after his mother died to help both of us. I knew he wouldn't be able to make it on his own since the house still hadn't been paid off, and I needed a better place to stay myself. I was willing to pay contractual rent to him to keep his house payments from getting behind and provide emotional support. He didn't take her death well. Anyways, I moved in and we were able to pay the house payments and lights between us, but we really couldn't have luxuries. We talked it over and decided to rent another room out of the house for the rest of what we needed. All we needed was an extra 600 a month and we should be golden. Him and I turned to Craigslist to try to find someone quick and close. This was a huge mistake. We had the ad up a few times because it got buried and finally someone responded to one of the ads. The ad described the house in detail and that they would be getting a room, a bathroom of their own, access to the kitchen, yard, and large driveway. I thought that was well worth the $600. A few days later, we moved the person right in after background checking them. No criminal record, no other evictions, and they had a decent job along with their own transportation. I thought we'd hit gold. Gold was far from what we had found. We found a gold-plated turd is what we found. Living with this guy who was also under contract was horrible. He'd constantly touch the thermostat even though that was clearly against his contract. We didn't say anything, we just left it alone. He'd mess up the kitchen and not clean up after himself like he agreed to do. He'd argue that he'd worked all day and that he was too tired to do his own dishes. Come to find out, he'd wake up at 11 a.m., claim that he was going to work, and actually go out to hang somewhere, and then go into work at 4 p.m. We found out his schedule after he'd told us he'd worked all day. We're nosy, but we're not out of balance. We told him that we knew, and he just kept making shit up, so we left it alone. The gnats and roaches started coming in because the dishes were piling up. All of them were his since I ate out every night and Rob had his own makeshift kitchen in his room. We're very strange people when we're backed in the corners, but we got tired of him counter-blaming us. One day I got a call from someone looking for him. Now, I never went into his room out of respect for boundaries, but I had to. It was important, and I don't know why they called me looking for him. I opened his door to find something that I never wanted to see. There were clothes piled up in random places, Jugs of what I can only assume came from him, being way too lazy to get up and use the bathroom, plus some other things. Piles and piles of dip cans and the brown filled bottles that go along with them. Something unidentifiable on the floor in the form of several green and black stains. And the worst part? Panties probably belonging to him. We'd never seen girls come in or go out of this house. And we have a camera system left over from Rob's mother wanting extra security. I'm guessing he was either stealing the underwear or wearing them himself. I really didn't want to think about it. How could one man in a little bit of time create such a mess? I was flabbergasted as I stared down the pile of filth in front of me, searching for the recently forgotten knowledge on how to breathe. I backed away slowly, closed the door, and turned around in shock as Rob came around the corner to check what happened to me. He saw the look of distress on my face and asked what was wrong with me. I told him in almost a whisper to go look into our roommate's room and meet me out in the car. I walked out to the car, turned it on, and remembered how to breathe. I'm kind of a germaphobe, so that actually gave me a panic attack. I told Rob that we need to get rid of him and he fully agreed. He was also probably so loud with anger that anyone across the street could hear him yelling in the car with all the doors closed. His mom's beautiful house was being ruined by this guy, and he was done. We went down to get an eviction notice to serve him the papers that day. This could not go on any longer. We couldn't live in a house with that much unhealthy filth in it. That night when he got home, 
Rob served him the papers, and that's when the neckbeard lost it. He started throwing things around the house and yelling that he didn't have anywhere else to go, and we were killing him. I know you can't see air quotes, but they're there. I'm doing them right now. We ended up calling the cops and getting them to help calm him down, but that only took care of him flailing around. He was an asshole to us the rest of the time he was there, and he got more and more disgusting. He even stopped paying rent. I told him if he wasn't going to pay rent, I'd just shut the electricity off in his room. That did, in fact, end up happening. He waited until the day after the eviction notice told him to move out, having to be escorted by the police off the property and leaving his filth in the room. We had to get professionals to come and clean the place, and they confirmed what was in the jugs lying on the floor. They said they found also some seriously illegal things in his room. I'm sure he went to jail for what they found, and I hope he did. Let's just say they weren't old enough. So, with him out of our hair, we found another roommate. But this time it was a local friend in need of a quick place to stay. We knew this guy, and we both knew that he was very clean and very respectful. Rob told him that he still had to sign a contract and he had no problem doing so. To this day, we all still live in the house with each other and we don't have problems. On occasion, I believe I still smell the neckbeard we found on Craigslist. But that may just be the mental scarring that came from stepping in that room and getting traumatized. Rob finally moved on from the dark hole that his mother's passing had put him in, and he became a much healthier person. I went on to find a better job, and our new guy helped us get internet and all that. We're doing great and we won't be looking to Craigslist anymore for any reason. Years ago, I was looking for someone special to spend time with. I made the mistake of trying online dating, such as Plenty of Fish. But I was about to make another even bigger mistake. I was pointed towards Craigslist by a friend, and I'm guessing it was just a bad prank. Never go on Craigslist to find a date, or just anything in general. There's too many chances of finding someone dangerous on that site. I'm not too proud I have to resort to online dating, but it's not like I know where to find other people that isn't a bar. There's not a lot of options for me where I live. So I put out an ad for a date who was close and... I found a few girls who seemed cool. Most of them were probably bots. The one I know it wasn't a bot was really sweet and wanted to move over to some other messaging system. We went to Facebook and it turned out that she lived a few blocks from my house. I told her we should meet up and go get some food somewhere. I know this all went fast, but what do I know about how meeting someone and dating is supposed to go? There's no manual for these things. You ask someone and they have a whole plan for you. I was going to try my own thing, the way it felt right. So the girl, Tiffany, agreed she'd like to meet up with me, so we decided on Golden Corral. Not a real fancy place, but a good place to meet that wasn't fast food. I'm not a big fan of fast food anyways, and it doesn't feel right to make your first impression to someone you're just meeting McDonald's. I was excited that I'd potentially met someone and how cool she seemed to be. I actually thought very highly of Craigslist for giving me this opportunity to show someone who I was and get to know them. I wasn't planning out marriage or anything, just wanted to see what would happen. So I got myself ready, going casual and not smelling like sweat for the occasion, and hoped that she'd do the same, but maybe not overdress. I got in my car and went down to the local Golden Corral to wait for her. She, almost on time, met me at the front door and we talked outside a little bit over a smoke. She was dressed like a normal person and talked like a normal person, so I felt at ease around her and she just took to me just fine. We went inside and actually had a nice dinner. She insisted on paying her half of the meal and I let her as we agreed between us that what's fair is fair for the both of us. We also didn't let any of that bullshit get in the way and trying to become friends. She was real down to earth and I really liked that. 
So the first meetup went exceptionally well, and I went home thinking that we may become very close, but still kept it in the back of my mind that she may not like me that way. At any rate, she gave off all indications that she was looking for a date like I was. Why else would she be on Craigslist and answer an ad for a date? I explained to her that I was looking for a girlfriend, but I'd like to take it slow and just see where things went. Maybe she heard me, maybe she didn't. My mind was all over the place, as you can probably tell. I would just have to see where this was going and not make too many plans if things looked like they were going to take a turn for the worst. When things finally did go south, it was already too late and later on. Tiffany and I went on a few more dates to restaurants, the movies, all the typical place when bored people are looking for stuff to do. We hit it off every time we met up, and eventually became a couple. This took a lot longer than I expected, but I was fine with it. But we did grow to actually know each other, and I wanted things to be solid between us. The only thing I couldn't have known was what was up next. After a few months of doing things together, talking about our lives, and really trying to probe each other, <laughs> I moved her into my place. She was looking to get out of that roach-infested little house that she was in anyways. She said the landlord was a little squirrely bastard and he was pretty slummy, and that he refused to fix anything or get the house spot-treated for bugs. When she did move in, she didn't bring much, and she left a bunch of stuff in the house she walked away from. I went out that night and got a brand new bed for her, and she opted to smush them together and make a mega bed. I was all for the idea, and that's what we did. She was the awesome person I'd been looking for, and all it took to find her was a simple Craigslist ad that my friend turned me to. I had to thank him for the idea, and sent two small gifts to him and his wife. Now, I don't blame him for what happened or for the suggestion he made. I'm still thankful for it, even though I joked about being a prank before. It wasn't his fault. I waited a few weeks of her living in my place to send them gifts. I sent him a computer part that he wanted, and his wife a silver necklace to replace the one that she broke. The night that they received their small gifts, I was really tired and I fell asleep almost instantly with my phone in my hand, texting work people about things. This is when things started to go a bit sour and I wished I'd found out sooner because all the trouble it was to fix all this. As I was texting my work guys about what we were doing the next time I was going in, I fell asleep. I usually have my phone on a screen timeout of about 10 minutes because it's a pain to unlock, as it was semi-broken. Tiffany was lying next to me and saw a message come in from my friend's wife. She woke me up when she snatched the phone out of my hand and asked me in a jealous tone, who it was I was texting. I had the number saved as Courtney, and she didn't like that I was talking to other females. I told her that that was my friend's wife, and she asked why she was thanking me for buying her a necklace since Courtney said all that in the message. Thank you for the necklace, but I feel bad for having you get it for me. Something like that. Tiffany started this entire thing where she didn't believe me that I got it to thank her. I didn't tell her what for, but I also got her husband something as well. The man who had been my best friend for years. She didn't believe me, and she called me a cheat. She yelled at me that I was being unfaithful to her, and she told me to go sleep on the couch in my own house. I told her that if she's going to act this way, she can leave, and when she calmed down, I'd take her to my friend's place later to get this cleared up. She refused to listen, and she started hitting me. I don't take abuse from anyone, so the first time she hit me, I walked out of the house and got into my car. I went down the street to a place I knew she wouldn't find me, and I called the cops. I told the cops that my girlfriend was abusing me, and I'd like her out of my house. They told me since I invited her inside, I'd have to evict her. But they also told me that they'd go talk to her about the hitting. I wasn't satisfied, and it sparked a deep want to get her out. I went back to the house in the morning after sleeping in my car for fear of if I went home, she'd do more hitting. She was asleep in my bed when I got back, so I waited until she woke up in a horrible mood to try to talk to her. I told her she needed to go. 
Apparently, she knew me telling her to leave wasn't going to do anything. I told her if we were going to live together, she needed to stop being jealous of my friends. This sent her into another jealous rage. I wasn't going to deal with the hitting, and I just left. After a while of this, I finally got her to agree to leave, and she stayed for several more months before finding a place and getting the hell out of my house with most of her stuff and some of mine. She thought she was entitled to my stuff, I guess. I told my friends about this, and they told me that if she ended up hitting me anymore, then stay with them. I had to a few times because she went from slapping me to full-on punching me. I never tried to retaliate, and always ran from her to keep her from doing any damage. But she damaged the relationship and my home, so that was enough. Also, the reason why her old place was so infested with bugs was because she was a total pig. She'd leave food wrappers on the floor, spill drinks on the carpet and not clean it, cook things and not wash her dishes like I did mine, and she left clutter everywhere. Roach recipe for the ages. After a while of that, I couldn't tell what stuff was mine and what was hers. That's probably why she left clothing and trash and took some of my stuff. Or she just stole things from me. Either one. I'm just glad that she's out of my house and out of my life with a few exceptions. Every now and then she'll stalk me when she sees me in public, and I'll catch her. Upon being caught, she'll come up and say derogatory things to me, and call me some racial slurs. She stopped this after a little bit and moved on. I guess she actually moved since I don't see her anymore. But the crazy woman is now officially out of my life, and I'm happy being single and working on myself. I'll never go on Craigslist again for any reason, or any other dating site for that matter. These things are traps, and my warning stands. If you're looking for love, don't look in the wrong places. When I got my first driver's license, I struggled through my job to get enough money to buy gas and pay insurance. It really wasn't a fun time. I'm a male now in my late 20s, and I was 18 then. Earlier that year, I'd gotten a PlayStation 3 for my birthday, and played most of the games that I wanted, and I was waiting for new releases. I really didn't have the time to jump on it all the time anymore since work life was taking up most of that time. I loved my PS3, but I just couldn't hang on to it. I made the decision to go ahead and sell it, so I'd have enough money to put gas in my car to get to work. I told myself I'd just buy another one later on, and go from there. It seemed at the time to be an easy plan. So I put it up on Facebook and eBay. Absolutely no one was interested. We didn't have things like offer up and stuff like that. I was getting annoyed with waiting for someone to pick up this thing, and I was just about to keep it. A friend on Facebook saw it finally and told me to try Craigslist because people were selling on there. I was willing to try it. I slapped it up there with some decent pictures and my contact info and waited. Immediately, I got a few buyers. Out of the few people that contacted me, there was only one that seemed like they were cool. There was one guy that was like, you sell it to me now. I give you monies. I felt that was a little pushy, so I went with the guy that asked nicely. I contacted him back and confirmed that he was interested in it. I told him that I could meet him halfway and confirmed that it was going to be a certain price. He agreed and I thought there would be no problems. I drove out to Wendy's halfway between us and waited for him to show up. I waited for a long time before I got ready to call him up and ask him where he'd gone, but that's when he showed up. He was around a half hour late. He was lucky I waited. I waved him down and he came over to my car immediately sticking half his body through my window. I told him the price and told him it was his. He told me that he had to put gas in his car and only had $10 less than what I was asking. I got a little pissed off because we'd agreed on that price, and now if I wanted to sell it, I'd have to take a $10 hit. I just felt it was on purpose. This guy was a little strange. He swayed from side to side like he couldn't sit still, 
and talked a little strange like he was in a big hurry. He would constantly repeat the first two or three words of a sentence, as if he was rethinking how to word things after he started. He made me uncomfortable. I just wanted him out of my hair and to get back home with the money. I took the undefined amount of money, that I can't remember how much it was, gave him the PS3 and took off. It was odd that he didn't immediately get back in his car and leave himself. He just kind of lingered in my rear view with the PlayStation in hand. I stopped at a gas station and filled my car up, thinking that was that. It got an unpleasant little surprise. The guy pulled up next to me as I was getting back in my car to leave and started trying to make conversation with me. He didn't try to talk about normal things. He talked in circles, about himself, about random things I had nothing to do with, and annoying ramblings. I told him I had to go, so I got in my car and left. I guess he hadn't had enough, so he followed me all the way to my house. This guy had the nerve to follow me all the way to my house and park in my driveway. I didn't notice he'd done this until I got out of the car and stepped out. That's when he pulled up and got out. How does one get it in their head to do this? I still can't figure it out. For as much as I thought about it, I thought he might have been high. I thought about calling the police and having them tell him to get out of here, but I tried it on my own first. I told him that he couldn't be here and that he needed to go. He got a little huffy with me and danced around a bit, confirming that he was in fact high. Who knows on what. After I'd pissed him off, he got back in his car, pointed his gross leathery finger at me, and said a few incoherent things in a threatening tone, and took off. I shuddered at the whole situation, and just went inside to get ready for work. After I left for work, I'd forgotten about the guy and went on about my day. It's when I went to go leave that I had an issue. The guy pulled up in the parking lot and tried to talk to me again. He still had the PS3 in his front seat, and he was still talking in circles. I guess he followed me to work as well, and I didn't even notice. Maybe he already knew where I worked and remembered me. Either way, I told him that I sold him the PlayStation, but we weren't friends. He needed to stop following me all over the place and go home and play his new system. He said that he wasn't going to play it. He held up quote fingers, and he said that he was giving it to his nephew. He then laughed obnoxiously, and then said he was kidding, but didn't finish the thought. I told him to go home, and I backed off. I got in my car and left with the intention of going straight to the police station. He didn't follow me up there, obviously. This guy was on some shit, but I couldn't prove it. Little did I care what he did, mind you. I just didn't want him following me around. After a while, I went to Walmart to pick some things up, and I went home. There he was in my driveway. He told me that he wanted the money back for the PlayStation, and gave me some sobby excuse. I told him sales were final, the PS3 works, it's in the box, and it's in great condition. There's no warranty. He got visibly pissed off and threatened my well-being. I was a little afraid of this guy's erratic behavior, but amidst all that, I pulled out my phone and dialed the police. Right in front of him, I told him that there was a guy in my driveway threatening to harm me, and they had an officer out there in 30 seconds blocking him in the driveway. I'm guessing the cop was on that street at that moment. So there was this whole thing about the cop checking him out, searching his car, and finding a heavy amount of ice in a bubble. I knew it had to be something. I told the cop that I wanted his car towed off my property, and I didn't want to press charges, I just wanted to be left alone. I gave a statement, and both him and his car were removed. I could have taken the PlayStation back at that point, but what kind of person would I be if I did that? I watched as he was arrested, taken away, and his car was towed off my driveway. I haven't seen or heard from the guy since. I have had fears of him coming back up here and starting trouble, but it's been about 10 years. I think the guy moved on or forgot about me, which is perfectly fine. I just hope my poor PlayStation made it somewhere safe.
Did you like that video? Well, there's more where that came from. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and follow me on Instagram. Links below in the description. Also, if you have a story to submit to the channel, link will be in the description for r slash sn stories. I'll see you next time.